Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, it's time. <laughs> Welcome to the wedding of Zachary and Emily this afternoon. My name is Sally Agostino. I'm the pastor of Southern Cross Community Church in Eltham. And my name is Raph Agostino. I'm lucky enough to be married to Sally, and we're here to celebrate Zach and Emily's wedding. Who's excited? <laughs> well, you'll be excited to know she's here. So, welcome to you who've come. Welcome to you on the live stream who are watching from overseas and are unable to make it. We know you're excited too. We're all excited. So please be upstanding to welcome the beautiful bridal party.
She's still coming, she's still coming, I'm sure. Please be seated. I'm sure you'll all agree that she looks stunning, doesn't she? Yeah. Zach looks handsome himself, I must add. And let's face it, glad they only settled for four on each side because this is a really crowded stage right here. So I get to do the very serious bits today. So take a breath. As a registered marriage celebrant, authorised to solemnise this marriage according to the law, I'm obligated to remind you in front of these witnesses of the solemn and binding nature of the relationship into which you are about to enter. Marriage according to Australian law is the union of two people to the exclusion of all others voluntarily entered into for life. The marriage of a man 
and a woman is intended by God to be an alliance of two hearts, a union of strength, its compassion and its delight. The exchange of vows which we are about to witness signifies the start of this journey and we all get the joy and the privilege of witnessing you take these sacred vows today. Let me pray for you. Let's pray. God, it is with absolute delight that we join today in witnessing Zachary and Emily commit to each other in marriage. You are our creator God and however feeble our attempts are to worship you and look after this world and each other, we often fall down in our efforts. So we look to you, our perfect father and redeemer, to be here in this place today to bless and seal this marriage. We pray a blessing on this very special occasion and we ask for your presence to be very real and very close. Amen. God plays a really important role in this couple's life. Christ is definitely at the centre of their life. So we're going to open up the ceremony here with three quick Bible readings. So if we're going to ask Mitch Amoa to come up here and to start our first Bible reading just from here. Thanks, Mitch. It's a pleasure to bring you God's word today. I'll be reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 2 to 4, and it'll be in the New Living Translation. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. Thank you. I'll be reading from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 8 to 9. This is the New Living, New International Version. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is holy, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. And now we've got Christina and Steve Matthews, also friends. It's a little bit longer, but I'm sure you have it. We'll be reading from um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 to 13, and this is the New Living Translation. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus from our brother Sothenes. I'm writing to you, to God's church in in Cariah, to you who have been called by God to be his own holy people. He made you holy by the means of Christ Jesus, just as he did for all people everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. May God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, give you grace and peace. I always thank my God for you and the gracious gifts he has given you. Now that you belong to Christ Jesus through him, God has enriched your church in every way with all of your eloquent words and all of your knowledge. This confirms that what I told you about Christ is true. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as energy, uh, sorry, as eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day of when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this for he is faithful to do what he says and he has invited you into partnership with his son Jesus Christ our Lord. I appeal to you dear brothers and sisters by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each other to let there be no divisions in the church rather be of one mind united in thought and purpose for some members of Chloe's household have told me about your quarrels For dear brothers and sisters, some of you are saying, I am a follower of Paul. Others are saying, I follow Apollos. I follow Peter, or I follow only Christ. Has Christ been divided into factions? Was I, Paul, crucified for you? Where are any of you baptised in the name of Paul? Of course not. (laughs) 
Em's looking strangely because I think that was maybe not the verses no. we thought. <laughs> but that's okay. The classic <laughs> wedding verses are from 1 Corinthians 13 and they are all about the necessity of love being at the core of everything we do. And fortunately, we all know those verses so well, we can refer to them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfectly all right because Corinthians is a great book and we're going to refer to it now. So it's fabulous to see you choose scripture as something you wanted to include in your service because you want your, your relationship anchored in something stronger than yourselves and that is such, it, it, it puts you ahead of the game right from the get-go. When, when I read the 1 Corinthians 13 passage, I thought, oh, it's the classic it's the classic wedding passage. And I nearly brushed it aside and then I went back to it and I had a look and I thought about the context of 1 Corinthians. I thought about the Corinthian church and how these were a group of people passionate and zealous in their walk with Jesus. And when I think zealous and when I think passionate and when I think diligent, you are two very classic people for that kind of zeal for life, for work, for doing things well, for doing things the right way. So, Em, you had a bit of a reputation around Plenty Valley, to be <laughs> honest, and I mean a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I will clarify. Em was one of those students who just knuckled down and did the work and got it done, and I guarantee you're the same way now, um, working at Donvale, and it's fabulous to see someone who is so dedicated to their work. Um, Zach, we know that you are determined, you know where you're going, and you've got a plan to get there. I mean, you have literal house plans. It's not just plans for life. It's this is a couple who know where they're going. And so when I look at these 1 Corinthians verses, I think the reminder for this zealous church and the reminder for you also is to be zealous, to be diligent, to have plans, to do things well, but never forget the invisible ingredient. The invisible ingredient of love is so crucial for everything that you do. Today, no problem. You are looking adoringly at each other. There are tears in both sets of eyes. And we know, <laughs> yes, there are. And we know that this is the day when you can say, I love this person with my whole heart. And you always will. But there'll be days when the passion and the zeal for getting things done might creep a little bit ahead. And so I, that's why I love that you chose the passage we didn't read. <laughs> I love that you chose to focus in on love. It is so important. And I've done you a service here. Because we weren't able to read um, the passage, I've taken the liberty of writing your own version of one portion of that scripture. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. It says this, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I was able to get my students into good study habits and get all my year 12s to achieve a study score of 50, but didn't have love, it would be worthless. And if I could successfully build a house, complete an MBA, work full time and still watch all the best soccer matches around the world. Football football, my apologies, but didn't have love, I would have gained nothing. My encouragement to you, our encouragement to you, as a wonderful young couple starting out, is not to get so focused on the wonderful gifts you have, and they are many, but to always be looking at that invisible aspect of your marriage, which is love. So hopefully this love factor won't be out of sight, out of mind. If you're anything like me, if you don't see it, you forget about it. So we've got your little gift, and this little gift is quite extravagant, actually. You want to grab it out for me? And this little gift hopefully will be a measuring stick and a reminder to make sure that you're always asking yourself the question and measuring this love. Whenever you're using these measuring cups... Thank you. No, thank you. That's for you. I didn't even wrap it. Whenever you're using these measuring cups, which, Zach, I'm sure you'll be cooking a lot and measuring things, I'm sure. Whenever you're using them, I want them to be a daily reminder of this one question. How is your love bucket going? You need to ask yourself that question. And as funny as that might sound, 
out of sight, out of mind can often happen in marriages. It might come as a surprise to you. It's really easy to love each other today. But in six months down the track, two years down the track, you want to look back after a year and go, I can genuinely, honestly say that I've given everything to my other. I've given everything to the other person and that person and you should be able to turn to Zach and say, you know what, I can genuinely, honestly say that you've worked hard at making me feel loved. That invisible ingredient needs to stay thick and in your marriage. And the reason why is because um, sometimes we tend to just forget that important... Are you making enough noise there? I'm making a lot Thank of you. noise. I'm Thank you. It doesn't have to be complex. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't even have to be hard work every single day. It just needs to be constant every day. And it's not something that comes just by sitting back and doing nothing. You need to work at it. So our hope is that this ordinary and very average gift helps you build an extraordinary and above average marriage. That's our hope. That was good, wasn't it? (laughs) So we now get to the official part of the ceremony. Now that we've put those very rattly cups and paper bag away, uh, this is part of the declaration of intent. So, Zachary, do you desire to enter into this marriage relationship with Emily and keeping yourself from all others to be a faithful and loving husband to her until separated by death. Emily, do you desire to enter into this marriage relationship with Zachary, keeping yourself from all others to be a faithful and loving wife to him until separated by death? Now we come to the part of the ceremony where we hear them exchange these words. Now these words are not just words, they're actually promises. So listen intently because you all become vow police. Whenever you're around them, you want to make sure you hold them accountable to actually living these here. So take your time, no rush, hold that microphone. I'll hold the iPad for you. Thank you. And you just say that to Emily. Emily, I take you to be my wife before God. Oh, jeez. That was quick. (laughs) I thought of it. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, And these people, my constant friend, my partner in life and my one true love. Sincerely and truly, I promise you that I will love you, care for you, and be faithful to you as my life partner as long as we both live. Whatever life brings, I will be yours in times of plenty and in times of want, in times of success and in times of hardship, in times of joy and those of sorrow. I promise to cherish and respect you, to care for and protect you, to comfort and encourage you, and stay with you as we grow together. I give you my hand and my heart, always and forever. Good job. Yeah, well done. (laughs) Um, Zach, I take you to be my husband before God and these people, my constant friend, my partner in life, and my one true love. Sincerely and truly, I promise you that I will love you, care for you, and be faithful to you as my life partner as long as we both live. Whatever life brings, I will be yours in times of plenty, in times of want, in times of success and in times of hardship, in times of joy and those of sorrow. I promise to cherish and respect you, to care for and protect you, to comfort and encourage you and stay with you as we grow together. I give you my hand and my heart always and forever. Fantastic. Now we're going to come to the part where we're going to seal the vows with the giving and exchange of rings. The rings, please. (laughs) <laughs> the typical I can't find them is happening right now. Oh, sorry, I need that back. Take that one. The small one. Emily, I give you this ring as a symbol of my faithful love. <clears throat> Honour and commitment to you. Wear it and keep it as a reminder of all that we have promised and all that we shall share. And look upon it to bring comfort and strength. All that I am and all that I have, I give to you. Um, Zachary, I give you this ring as a symbol of my faithful love, honour and commitment to you. 
Wear it and keep it as a reminder of all that we have promised and all that we shall share, and look upon it to bring comfort and strength. All that I am and all that I have, I give to you. Zachary and Emily, you have made these promises to each other today in front of family and friends. You have shown your lifelong commitment to each other through your vows and by the giving and receiving of rings. By the authority vested in me by God and by the state of Victoria, I now pronounce you husband and wife. What God has joined, let, lo let no one separate. You may now share your first married kiss. Mm. The photographers just let me know he didn't get a good enough shot, so go again. Okay, I made that part up. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move to the signing of the registry. So if you guys just move over to the table, that would be great. And Michael and Taya, if you follow as well. And Hans, when you're ready.
you take a deep breath now? <laughs> Good, now it's party time. Wait, we're going to pray first, but that's part of the party, okay? Let's pray for you in your brand new marriage. Heavenly Father, we thank you for marriage. We thank you that you will continue to walk with Zach and Em in their journey together in marriage. We ask for your protection, your blessing and your strength as they keep choosing day by day to love each other with a selfless, practical and invisible love. May they keep looking to you as their source of love. And we ask all of this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. All right, just while I've got your attention and before we announce the bride and groom, just a couple of quick announcements. Please gather outside for a group photo. And also there'll be um, some lawn bowls happening just behind the reception here. So start a game, join a game, whatever. We've cleared all the fallen branches for you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Tannen Vile. Make some noise. <laughs> Mum and Dad, you're allowed to get involved, but <laughs> off you go. Face toward 